Hey everybody, welcome to our team call. Uh, tonight is May 22nd, 2017, and we have a super special guest speaker, Miss Robin Peacock. Um, Robin and I met back in November when we both went to a Tony Robbins event and we had girl parties. Uh, it was so fun. <laughs> it was so cool. So fun. <laughs> yeah, um, the conference itself was like insanely amazing, but being uh, surrounded with other coaches from the team, and even though we'd never met before, it just felt like a family. Like you click right away and you just have that connection and like being able to share something like that, especially a conference, an event, um, is really life changing. So um, I'm happy I gained like a super awesome friend. And Robin's just so sweet and so genuine, um, and she just cares so much. She has a huge heart, and she doesn't realize how incredible she is, so I'm going to remind her. Um, but here are some of her accolades, I guess. So she's a wife. Um, uh, she has a lot of fur babies, <laughs> so she's a fur mama. <laughs> she um, is a diamond coach in um, Diesel Nation. She started as a discount coach in 2014 and then really took it seriously in July of 2016, I'm assuming probably after summit, right? Well, I'll talk about that. Yeah. All right, so she'll tell you the story. Um, she is currently in the shift shop tech. Shift, oh, that's a tongue twister. Shift, it's hard to say. <laughs> shift shop test group, which is super badass. Like being selected is a huge honor, and she will talk about her experience so far. It's week three, this week, and this is like the toughest week with like as far as workouts and the meal plan so she's like trucking through um you guys have to friend her after this call because she does live videos like a lot like every single day at least one which is great because <laughs> she really shows you like a sneak peek into her life and just being herself and being genuine and just letting herself shine through her social media which before november like is like complete opposite um so it's amazing just watching her transform in so many positive ways and just a few short months. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to you, Robin. So just tell us how you got started with Beachbody, um, how you know the, the last year or so has changed and what has you know happened and how you've evolved and enlighten us, girl. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Paulina. Like, I love you so much. When we first met at Tony Robbins, I was like really nervous because I knew Paulina was somebody that like my coach is Mindy Hoard, the founder of Team Relentless. Um, and I knew that like she knew her and I was like, I don't know who this stranger from Miami is. I'm so scared, which was silly because she's obviously amazing. Um, but, uh, and as I was listening to you say all that, I was like, I'm going to start crying. That person sounds amazing. And oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's hard to believe because so much has happened in the short year that I have really started taking this business and this opportunity, my own health and everything seriously. Um, so as Paulina mentioned, I started in 2014 as a discount coach when um, my, my coach Mindy was in the PIO test group. And at the time I was 80 pounds overweight and I had been for since, so that was in 2014 and I had gained 80 pounds in 2009. Um, and so I had been suffering and miserable and depressed and sad and, uh, just a whole lot of other stuff along with that. Um, for, since, um, during all that time. And I was really struggling to find something that worked. And I actually had tried Shakeology in 2012 when Mindy first became a coach. For some reason, I thought tropical vegan strawberry was going to be the flavor for me, even though I'm completely a chocoholic. And so I ordered that, hated it, didn't feel worthy enough for it, sent it back, didn't talk to Mindy for two years. Now, I need to tell you that Mindy and I are like best friends. We grew up together in a very small town. We're friends all through childhood, like close friends. So the fact that I did that is a little bit crazy. And the fact that she kept talking to me when I decided that I was ready to come back is a testament to what this company does, which you guys are all familiar with. Um, so a little bit about my backstory, about why I felt so unworthy um, and unlovable and unfixable. Uh, when I was growing up as a child, my mother, when I was eight years old, my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. 
Um, she went in and out of treatment, in and out of remission for 10 years, and then passed away when I was 18 um, in 1998. And at that time, my, as you can imagine, my whole family fell apart. All the foundation of my life came apart, and I completely felt alone. Um, I had a terrible relationship with my stepdad. I haven't really talked to him since then. Uh, my biological father is in our lives, but not a huge part of it. So I really became, I felt like I became an orphan at that time, and I kind of struck out on my own. And it really, um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had started struggling with depression and anxiety all the way back in my teenage years, probably just since my entire childhood, because it really, um, it, it, it kind of affects your uh your maturing process when these traumatic things happen to you as children. And so I couldn't recognize the things that were happening to me. And I just kept trying to plunge along in through life and trying to numb myself and every feeling I ever had um, through alcohol, through drugs, through irresponsible behavior. <laughs> um, and then uh, when I was 25, I was trying to get myself together, got a pretty good job and met this amazing man um, his name is Jason. We're actually married. So I'll talk about him a lot. He's incredible. I don't know how he kept loving me through all this because he has seen me go through some serious ups and downs and the worst times of my life. Um, so we met in 2005. We got married in 2008. And then we decided we're going to start a family. So when I was 29, I got pregnant first month right off the bat. No problem. And, you know, it, up until that time, I had been like this skinny fat girl. I was always thin. And my, my parents had taken me to the doctor to be like, is she healthy? Like, are, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Da, 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 da. But so I had always been this thin person. And that was the way I saw myself and perceived myself. So I didn't take care of my body. I didn't exercise. I didn't eat well because I could just eat all the candy and chips and garbage and crap and pasta that I wanted. And it never affected my body. So I just didn't even think about it. And I kind of had not the I'm going to live forever mentality. I had the who knows how long you're going to live mentality. So do what you want. <laughs> and since it didn't affect me physically and I looked great, I was like, well, who cares? So I did not have a foundation of health or fitness. I've never been an athlete. And then I get pregnant. <laughs> and so I think, well, I'm just going to breastfeed and play with my baby and we're going to, I'm going to lose all this weight. So who cares? I'm going to eat whatever I want during this pregnancy, you know, within parameters that are safe, of course, for the pregnancy. Um, everything was going great. And I had a very healthy exams. Every, everything came out great. Every test along the way. And then at 26 weeks, we had our ultrasound where they confirmed I was having a, a boy. I was having a son, my son Sawyer. And then three days later, I stopped feeling him move. And I knew something was wrong and they tried to tell me, oh, you're early in your pregnancy. You just, you just need to drink some juice and lay on your side and he'll start moving again. And I was like, no, 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 something is wrong. I, it's just one of those things, it's hard to explain. If any of you are mothers, you kind of have that thing, you know if something is wrong. So I went in and they um, could not find the heartbeat sent me to the ultrasound across the street and confirmed that I had lost him. Um, so I had to have an induced labor and, um, and I lost my son and I just, I couldn't believe that here I was 29. I'd lost my mother. My family fell apart. I lost my son. And I'm trying to start this life, a new, a new life with my husband, with this incredible man. And I just thought that was the end. Like, how much more can I possibly take? Like, what else could happen to me? And, and I just felt like it was so unfair. And I, and I became this double victim. And I've had this title that I kind of gave myself for a long time ago called a motherless child and a childless mother. And I wore that like a martyr for years. Um, for a long time, I did not talk about my mom or my son because it was too painful. Then I started to talk about my mother and my son because it gave me some kind of significance. People cared about me all of a sudden because my story was so sad um, that I, gave, I got some kind of attention. I didn't recognize it as that until this last year when um, 
you know, so fast forward, you know, from 2009, I, the next year, 2010, I had two miscarriages. And then I was like, that's it. I just cannot do this anymore. I can't have any more loss. I started keeping my husband at arm's length because he's 10 years older than me. He's probably going to die sometime too soon too, because everything I love gets taken away from me. That was kind of the mentality that I had. And I spent years in that victim mode of feeling like life is out to get me. I'm just existing. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I, my mom was 36 when she was diagnosed with cancer and she passed away when she was 46. Um, and I just felt like just stuck. Like I didn't have a future. I never thought about any kind of goals. I never did anything that was too far in advance because I didn't believe that it was possible for me to have any kind of life beyond loss and sadness and suffering. And so when I turned 34, I started thinking about how my mom was only two years older than me when she was diagnosed with cancer. And all of the pain and pressure of my entire life started to implode inside me. And I pulled away from life. Um, my depression got so bad that I was having panic attacks like several times a week. So bad that three or four times, at least three times, my husband took me to Instacare because I thought I was having a heart attack. And I was absolutely sure that I was dying. Um, he was out with his band one night playing a, a show and I called 911 because I thought I was having a heart attack and, and he would come home and find me dead because all I could think about during the whole, my entire life is lost. And I didn't see, you know, the signs of what it actually was. So because of that, I started um, looking into my doctor was like, you have got to get it together. Like you are a healthy person. I mean, he said, he said it to me in a much nicer way than I just said it right now, but he was like, you know, you're healthy and we got to work on getting you even healthier because the only thing that was really wrong with me is that I was 80 pounds overweight. And so two years ago, Jason and I decided, well, maybe we'll try again to have a baby. Went through all these tests. Everything's normal. You're healthy. Go for it. Can't get pregnant. And finally, the doctor said, your weight could be a factor. And that was just like, just like a knife in the heart. Like, of course it is. Of course it is. This, all this weight that I gained when I lost my son is now keeping me from getting pregnant again. And that was all I could think about. But I just decided at that point, like that was rock bottom and I'm not going to let this take over my life and I've got to do something about it. So I had tried over the years to go to a gym. I had tried um, I had ordered like home workout DVDs that were not beach body, like, uh, some yoga stuff. And I had, I would be gung ho for like a week and I would quit because <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to be that much overweight, everything in my body hurt and depressed and not have any, my husband is very supportive, but not to have anyone else, you know, cheering me on. And not knowing how to get my nutrition under control, because like I said, when I was eating like any, I would just go to 7-Eleven and buy like Kit Kats and, and, um, and Twix. And I would have like three or four of each one of those a night. Like that is insane. I don't know how I don't have diabetes, to be honest, because I used to be a complete sugar crazy person. Um, so decided I have got to get this under control. And I remembered I had ordered that bag of Shakeology from Mindy and I had sent it back and she's putting all these posts up about Pio. And I was like, okay, this is it. I got to get it together. And I just, she had posted a link or something. And so I just went and I signed up and I signed up as a discount coach and I got my challenge pack and I didn't even tell her. And then she was actually at summit and she messaged me and she was like, did you just order a challenge pack and sign up as a coach? And I was like, yeah, I need the discount and I need to get it together. So that is the first time something started to change in my life. And I, um, I went full in and I was, I did amazing with Pio. I lost like 12 or 15 pounds, which felt incredible to me. Like I didn't think that was possible because I had tried so much and suffered through so much that I just thought, of course, this isn't going to work. There's that little voice in my head that said, everything that you try to do is going to blow up. So 
we'll see. But I've had great results and I started sharing and people were like, oh, what are you doing? You look so much happier. And then I became a success starter without even trying because I just was sharing on Facebook what I was doing because I actually started feeling good for the first time in possibly my whole life, feeling good about myself. Um, and so I got my trip, my ticket to summit for the next year. And I was like super into it, loved what I was doing. Personal development started to really change me. One of the first books I read was the compound effect. And I, it really struck a chord with me about how just these tiny little things added together are going to make a huge change. Um, and of course you are a badass. That's one that Paulina and I are way into. Um, Jen Sincero, I think is incredible. And I love the way that she puts everything that you're trying to examine into perspective for people who have never been a part of, you know, the self-help personal development kind of world. And I had a great 2014 and I was like, this is awesome. Um, and then I got put off track around Christmas of between 2014 and 2015. And I was like, mm, I guess I just can't be a coach. I can't do this. Um, nobody's going to believe in me. I'm, I'm not losing weight fast enough. I'm not getting fit fast enough. I don't understand nutrition. I'm not an athlete. I don't have a college degree. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I just got in my own head and I quit. And I was like, I can't do this. Um, and it just was like this snowball effect of one little thought just put me completely downhill. And I, and I remember feeling like it was a fluke that anybody wanted to know what I was doing before. And it was a fluke that um, I had lost that 12 pounds because then I ended up putting back like eight on. And I didn't really, I know, you know, at the time I knew the scale wasn't the way to measure things, but it was so ingrained in me that that was the way to measure my success that I just felt like a failure. And I felt like there's nowhere that I can take this business because no one's going to believe me or follow me or, or care what I have to say. And I can't inspire anybody. So I took all of 2015 off. I never canceled my account, my coach account. And, and I think now that I knew that I, there was still a part of me that did not want to let go because it was the happiest time in my life when I was really active in my team and doing personal development and focusing on my health every day. Um, so a little part of me obviously did not want to let go of that. And then um, last year, uh, around February, I was like, I had gotten up to 213 pounds. I'm only five, three and a half. It's big, a lot for my frame and everything hurt. And this is when the doctors were telling me, um, again, it's probably your weight. Like this was just this ongoing story with every time I would see a doctor about my fertility issues, it was always your weight is an issue. So I was like, okay, getting serious again. And I contacted Mindy and I told her, we, I need to get it together. I need your help but I cannot be a coach. I will be a discount coach, but I cannot help anybody else because I need so much help myself. And she really, you know, knowing me all of our lives, she really understood that that wasn't just me not believing in myself. That was really me being at the absolute bottom of my life. And so she helped me. And <laughs> the same thing happened again within a couple of months. I, um, was just feeling so much better and so much more excited about life than I had ever been, you know, and, and during that time I, I had had a 13 year career in a corporate environment. I worked for an expert testimony firm. I did HR for five of those years. And then I worked for a director of the firm as his executive assistant and doing billable work for him. And so I was, really tied to a desk all day long. And that, um, and I really had the only, the only persona that I had for myself is that even though I don't have a college degree and I didn't have any formal training or anything, I, I, I was joked, I kind of clawed my way into this corporate career because I was capable and I was willing to do what it took. And so I, I had this complete professional persona that I had crafted um, and I always was a little worried somebody would find out, you know, 
I, here I am with people that have like MBAs and PhDs and I never even went to college, you know, and I didn't want to talk about it because it was embarrassing. Like I'm 37 years old and I'm finally able to be like, it's okay that I didn't go to college. Um, I went to massage therapy school and that worked out fine for me. <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it was this persona that I just made around myself. So then when I started getting serious about coaching and being excited about it, it was this weird double life that I was having because I felt like at work, I was, you know, work Robin and it was very serious and buttoned up and like professional. But then in beach party, I was like my real Robin. I was excited and I was happy and I was funny and I was, I could be myself. And I had never felt like that. And my husband kept commenting to me, you are happy every day. You come home in a better mood. Uh, you feel better about yourself. I used to not be able to walk around the block with that, with my dog without feeling like I was out of breath and going to die. And then all of a sudden, a couple months into being serious about my own health and fitness and nutrition and my personal development and being involved with my, these people that cared about me, all these things started to shift and change in my mind, in my body, in my health, in my fitness. And so I was ready for it to shift in my business as well. And I got excited to start posting again and start telling people what I'm doing and talking about wh what it is that is making this change happen for me. Um, and so I got, ex we, I got my ticket for summit and I was ready to go because when I had won that ticket as a success starter for Nashville the next year, I didn't go because I was 2015 when I was like, I can't do any of this. So it was like my redemption to go to summit. Oh, my husband is home for, with the cat from the vet. So Hunter's losing his mind. Um, and so I got my ticket for Summit. I was posting everything. I had challenge groups going, I had free groups going, I had people joining me and being excited about what I was doing and what I was sharing with them. And it just made me feel amazing. And I started thinking like, I could maybe actually do this because it started to all shift in my mind, which is just a word that I was already using. So the fact that I'm in the shift shop is crazy because it just was like the universe putting all of this together. Um, and so I go away for my, well, an extra fun layer of my corporate career is the director that I worked for left the firm, started his own, took me with him. And so I was his only employee and, uh, I was his office manager. I did everything for him and <laughs> starting a business is not easy. He, uh, it was a lot of hours, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, literally blood, <laughs> literally sweat, literally tears. Um, and a lot of work to help him create this dream that he had for his future. So I go away for 4th of July weekend and I come back and he told me that, he couldn't afford to pay me anymore. So I had left my solid career that I'd had for 13 years and um, with the same company. And all of a sudden I didn't have a job anymore. And I was shocked and I was upset and I was hurt because I had put so much of my faith into him just to have it all kind of ripped out from under me. And then my husband told me, this is a good thing. You love Beachbody. You love helping people. You love coaching. It's the happiest you have ever been. It's the thing that is giving you purpose and excitement and passion in your day. You're healthier. You're more joyous. You're more loving. You're more open. You're more present. Like, go for it. <sighs> Which makes me want to cry. Like, he just got home and he can hear me talking. <laughs> He just went, oh. <laughs> um, and so I did. And it, I'm not going to say that it has been easy, but it has been so fulfilling to spend all of my day, all of my time helping people just even learn how to be just a slight bit better, like how to improve the, the smallest things in their day. And one of the things that happened is we went to Tony Robbins, which is something I never would have done before. Well, I wouldn't have been able to have time off to go to Summit and go to Tony Robbins if I had been in my corporate job. Um, and when I went to Tony Robbins, Paulina saw an incredible breakthrough. 
I just want to hug you. Uh, she saw me cry a whole lot and talk about all of these things that I've been sharing with you that I used to keep bottled up inside of me because I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable with my story. I didn't want to make anybody sad. I didn't want to think about it. I wanted to pretend that none of it ever happened. And it wasn't until we went through that experience together that all of a sudden it all, my, my own insecurities and, and self-limiting beliefs sh just changed. And it was like this veil got pulled off of me. And if I hadn't become a coach, if I hadn't come back to this opportunity, none of that would have happened for me. I would have been sitting in my cubicle, uh, maybe, you know, filing papers or boxing up somebody else's office or doing something mundane thing that had gave me no fulfillment in life. And instead I got to go and meet this beautiful, amazing person, share my heart and soul with who was a stranger, but then became one of my best friends and realize that every single one of us have so much more to give than we are allowed to think by you know, most standards of our society, we are not allowed to think that we have anything inside of us that anybody is going to care about, but we do. Every single one of you do. Every single one of you. Every single one of you has some piece and st of your story, piece of your heart, piece of your soul that is going to set someone else's life on fire. You might not even know it. I mean, here now, it's been almost a year that I've been focusing on Beachbody, um, and I'm not making the income that I did as a, in my corporate job. I'm getting, you know, working towards it. I have done um, other jobs to help maintain finances along the way, but I'm making it work to build that dream because there's the freedom that comes along with it. There's the financial reward if you're willing to work for it, because of course Beachbody can't guarantee any kind of income. But the sense of fulfillment and purpose and worthiness that has come from this has been so much more to me than any paycheck or any accolade or any rank because my life changed 180 degrees. The old Robin would never have sat here and told you this story. The old Robin would never have let you know that there was any crack in the corporate veneer that she held for a long time. So, you know, because of all these things, because I've been going live on Facebook and talking about myself, because I've been showing myself struggle through country heat because I have two left feet, struggle through court of force because I'm not an athlete, struggle through a 21 day fix, 21 day fix extreme, doing all of these things and showing that I'm a real person who is just trying to be a, the better version of myself, the best me I can be. Because I do, I do all that and I share my story and I share my dog, I share my husband, I share some of my cats, but they're kind of little buttheads. I don't know if you have cats, but that's kind of how they are. But just being who I am has just given me the opportunity to now be in this test group for Shift Shop. When I got that email, I was getting my nails done to go to Punta Cana. So this is like a mind-blowing thing, a story I never thought that I would be able to say. I went to the Dominican Republic on the Success Club trip. i would never been anywhere outside of the country before that. So that was freaking epic. Amazing. So I'm sitting there getting my nails done to go on this trip. And I get a message from corporate and she's like, check your email, check your email. And I'm like, what? So I screamed in the manicure shop and everybody was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> like the most amazing news happened, but I don't know if I can tell you what it is because it's confidential. <laughs> and they all thought it was crazy. But luckily, like my girl that does my nails was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, and then I was just like on cloud nine because I'm the girl who walked the mile in, in PE because I could not run. Um, I've never done a push up or a pull up in my life until now. I can't run. I have terrible cardio because of asthma, but they chose me to try this program, which I just finished it. My, um, 
We're just starting week three. I did the first of the 45 minute sessions tonight. I finished it eight minutes before this call started, which is why I'm like beat red like a tomato and look like a hot mess. But you know, like I told Paulina, I'm just sitting here being proof the product works because this program is, it's so crazy. They talk so much about, Chris talks so much about the mindset shift. That is what the shift shop is about. Yes, you're going to get amazing physical results. Yes, but you have to put in the work, but you also have to put in the work for your mind. And that is something that is being, it is just in every layer of that program. And that is why it is speaking to me and helping me do athletic things that I have never done in my life because it's the mindset shift. And it's all these little small pieces that are like, like I was saying, the compound effect when I read that book, I'm seeing it happen in my life. I am seeing the compound effect take place. So now in the past year, since last February, I have lost um, 54 pounds. I have gone from a 1XL to a medium. Uh, I have become my real honest to God person who can openly be my own personality. I'm in a test group for an amazing program that is for athletes. I mean, in my mind, it's like for athletes. So maybe I am one, you know, it's making me start to think about things in such a different way. And it really is because even though I turned my back on Beachbody and on my coach at first, they, she held that door open and welcomed me right back in with open arms. And that is what this whole company is about. It's what I am about. And I am just so honored and grateful to be a part of this. Um, at this point, I, I, I'm just so grateful for life. And that was not how I lived for the first 36 years of it. I wasn't grateful at all. I was scared and I was bitter and I was angry. And now just every day I have gratitude and I have a plan for the future and I can see an amazing future for myself. I know I have just talked for a very long time, <laughs> so I'll send it back to Paulina. <laughs> well, I'm like speechless, seriously, like you inspire me. I'm so, so proud of you. I'm so happy to call you my friend. And like I said, seeing this transformation over the past few months, like you have done a complete 180. And I didn't even really know you before this, like, you know, before Tony Robbins. I really didn't have much to compare except for like the few days that we were together. But seriously, like, girl, you're my girl crush. <laughs> but yeah like my my heart is just beaming with like pride and joy and just so inspired and fired up and I hope you guys took a lot out of this call because seriously like wow you're incredible um and I'm so happy that you didn't give up on yourself even though you had your little moments and your few months off or not and whatever but yeah like you you just decided it it takes you know a second to make a decision like don't stay stuck where you are because of all the other things that you're telling yourself or, you know, maybe situations you've been through or crappy crap that you've been dealt because we've all been through shitty shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like no one's immune to it. Um, Everybody. But yeah, so I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments for Robin. I don't know how much you can really tell us detail wise for like shift shops. I know it's very confidential and we don't want to get Robin in trouble, but um ask me whatever questions you have because, and if I can answer it, I will, because it's incredible. I'm, I'm super psyched that I can talk about it. Um, I know that this is kind of a different call than you're probably used to. You're probably used to talking about like skill sets and whatever. So I, but the whole mindset thing really goes with shift shop. And so yeah, if you guys have any questions, I would love to talk about it. Let me look in the chat. Let me see. <laughs> Oh, thanks, you guys. You're all so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> um, what's like the biggest change, I guess you would say, physically that you've noticed from the first two weeks going into your third week, as far as like maybe your endurance or like... Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like the physical endurance has totally changed. All day long, I was seeing in the shift shop test group page on Facebook, people going, oh my God, Chris is trying to kill us. Like <laughs> it was intense. Like these super fit people, like putting these posts up of like, 
I'm dying. I've never sweat so much. Like that was so hard, but I'm so glad I did it. And I, all day long I was running errands and I was just thinking, Oh my God, I gotta get this workout done. I gotta get this workout done. Oh my God, I gotta get this workout done. And even my husband who is super fit, he did it this morning. It's a 45 minute workout. He got 35 minutes in and was like, I can't do it anymore. So I was like, this is not good <laughs> because I've lost 54 pounds, but I still have a few more to go. So I was just like, oh man, I don't know what's going to happen. Those first two weeks lo load you up. They are make you so ready for the third week because you're working on your agility, plyo, endurance, um, and your belief in yourself. It sounds weird, but when you, when you go through this program, when it releases and you watch it and you do it, you're going to be like, oh my God, this man is speaking to my soul. Chris Downing has so much heart and integrity and motivation and affirmations for you like that are all sprinkled throughout the workout that you're just like, as soon as you feel, oh my God, I can't do one more, whatever. You, I'm looking at the ground and I'm like, oh my, he's crazy. I can't do this. And I hear him say, go past that wall. What you, everything you want and desire and need is on the other side of that wall. And I'm like, you're right. I got to do it. I got to do it. So tonight I did the 45 minute workout that even my hot husband couldn't do. And I was like, on cloud freaking nine because this just proves that what you believe you can do you can do and like i said i have even though i have done a bunch of programs and i've lost a bunch of weight i don't think of myself as being super fit yet but i have seen like the ramp up i have seen leaps and bounds of improvement in myself and i have like I paused it and I was like, I got to record myself doing this. Like, I'm pretty impressed with me right now. So I might be becoming an athlete. Look at you. Um, you are an athlete. Believe it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, there's a muscle in here. It's coming it's up. Got a little insulation friend down here, but it's happening, you know? And it's crazy. Like, I feel so much stronger in my body. Um, so you do every other day is the first the first day is uh, like a speed day, agility day, and then it's a strength day, and then speed day, and then strength and core, and then speed, and then strength and core, and then a rest day. I think I'm allowed to tell you guys that. Um, so you, it's staggered, and you go from 25-minute workouts to 35-minute workouts to now this week it's 45-minute workouts. Um, so it gets you ready to get to dig deeper and get even harder on yourself. Um, somebody asked, what is the – meal plan like? Uh, the meal plan is really simple and straightforward. Um, you can either follow the containers. Um, of course, you do your calculation based on whatever for this particular program. You can follow the containers or they have a complete plan written out for you. Eat this for breakfast. Eat this for your snack. Eat this for lunch. Eat this for snack. Eat this for dinner. And so it totally makes it easy to follow because if you're like me and even though I've done a bunch of programs, I still struggle with the nutrition part. And so I know my, excuse me, I know my challengers do too. And I'm sure you guys have the same thing with your people. It's like when you're trying to go from like just a whatever diet to eating healthy and feeding your body properly for what it is you're asking it to do, it can be really confusing and difficult and hard. So they lay it out and it gets super, super simple, even more simple than 21 day fix. So wow. that's really great. So that's the one you're following, that meal plan? Yeah, so I'm following that meal plan. And um, it's, it's uh, you do the same thing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday is the same. So it's the same thing, but every other day it switches. Um, and honestly, I haven't been hungry. I haven't been, um, I haven't felt deprived. I haven't felt like I'm missing out on anything. I feel good because they really dialed in the nutrition to support what I'm doing physically. Um, and it does take you from some carbs to no carbs. I have no carbs this week. Um, so it's, it's going to transition you to start burning fat from your body for energy versus the carbs that you're eating. So well, okay. <laughs> I kind of have guns. I don't know. It's starting to pop out right there a little bit. Girl. <laughs> um, I, I can't cool. even believe it. 
I guess it's like carb cycling. I don't really know that much about carb cycling and people have said it's sort of like keto, but I'm not 100% sure about that either. Um, but it does take you from some s small carbs the first week to a, a little bit and then none. And then I know there's, I'm not sure how much I can tell you about the way the meal plan switches around, but you do switch weeks around if you, as you go into round two. Um, but it is to help keep your body like, on its toes so your your metabolism doesn't get used to it and you just have your body keeps guessing about what's going on to help it get stronger and and work more efficiently yeah how awesome yeah. so do you plan on doing another round like right after you finish this last week yeah so the test group has a three-week commitment and then optional round two uh i'm doing this till summit like I might do it forever. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. So it's, it's, um, when it comes out on, it'll be in the library on July 13th. So with all, I'm sure we all have the all access on demand. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys will be able to see it that day it has the, it'll have the meal plan ready to go. And the meal plan comes with like a week one's grocery list week two's grocery list. It's awesome. beautiful if you just want to follow it. And of course, like if you, if there's some specific thing on there that you don't want to eat, you have options. It gives you like the container list of what you can have for each container uh, color. And so you can, you can tweak it to, and modify it to make it work for you. And of course there's a modifier track for everything. Um, and he, let me say one more thing about the meal plan. So the meal plan also, cause this was a big discussion in, in the um, team, the test group page, there is vegetarian options and they, they walk you through how to do that as well. So it's really like a high protein focus um, meal plan, but they give you vegetarian options to make it easy. And then um, what was I going to tell you the other thing? I lost it. I don't know. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? I don't know, but I, one question. So as far as equipment goes, so with the program, you get the little colored markers, right? For like the yeah, stuff. Yeah, you. Stuff. <laughs> and then, oh, so cool. <laughs> You're on the floor still. So, those are the markers. You start off in the first week with two. Second week, you have three. This week, I have four. That's so cool. So you use the um, for the strength days, you need just like a light set of weights and a heavier set of weights or? Yeah, so um, they give you recommendations in the booklet of uh, like what weights to do for men and women. Um, uh, and of course you just have to adjust to your abilities and whatever. Um, you use the markers on the speed days, you don't use them on the strength days, so. Do you need anything else? Markers are great, you just like. Bam, that's my goal. That's what he talks about. It's amazing. He's like, I want you to hit that marker. I want you to talk about your dreams. I was like, okay, I can do that. I, love that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I did his workout in Punta Cana and I was like in tears at the end because he is like truly like that inspirational. Like you said, like he just knows like when to say the right stuff, like when you're about to quit. And he's like, just give me yeah. one more minute. Like just keep doing it. Like it's, it's incredible. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm really, really stoked about this program. So I hope everybody else is too. Um, yeah. And it's just cool that we get to have like insider info a little bit because there's so many Diesel Nation coaches that are part of the test group. So as oh. you guys are finishing out this week, it's going to be great just like seeing your results and your final like numbers and just your, you know, your feedback on how much you loved it because obviously you love it. <laughs> I do. I absolutely love it. And it's funny because like, I'm starting to see abs for the first time. Like I've been feeling them for a while, but now I can like start to see the very top of them, like little baby abs. Um, <laughs> and it's, but the thing is, is I've also felt like a big difference in the way like my clothes fit and I just physically feel better, which when, after I did quarter force for two rounds, I didn't think I could feel any better because I was like, I'm a badass. I'm like kicking ass in this thing, punching, kicking, did it at a plyo, loving it. Oh my God, like there's always another level. And when you change your focus and you do something different with your body and your nutrition, there's always another level and a different avenue to explore and a new part of you that you did not know was there. So I really agree. And that also helps your business too, because you're testing different programs. You're being able to speak from the heart and be a proof of the product and share with different people who are watching your journey 
what else we have to offer. Because if you're just doing 20 day fix over and over and over and over again, like that's great, but. Yeah. yeah and I think it's, it's just really important to try different programs. Um, and because you need to be able to give people advice and help them when you're talking to them about what their goals are. If you haven't tried any yet, only, only 21 day fix, you're not gonna know maybe they need 10 minute trainer or maybe they need Pio for flexibility or maybe they need body beast because they wanna build muscle. I've done all of those. I've done hammer and chisel. I've done all of them except for P90X, which I am still terrified of. And I am doing the hardest freaking one there is. So I probably can do P90X. <laughs> it's okay, I have never done P90X either. But um, you're off the hook. I'll let it go. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you guys are super fired up. Thank you so so much. Um, it's getting late on our end, so we're gonna yeah. You guys are gonna go. Yeah. Thank, thank you all so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions about the program, like feel free to shoot me a message. I'll let you know if it's something I can share or not. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Love you, girl. And I can't wait to see you at Summit. So everyone else is coming to Summit. You guys can meet Robin too in real life. And I will look like much better than right after a workout. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, guys. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, one picture. Sorry. How much? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, my head is like in a different place. I'm telling you, this travel day has been like so crazy. All right. Everybody smile and look pretty for the camera. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye.